in this video we'll look at uh, the fact that in rabbinic literature we have a lot of traditions saying that God essentially dwells everywhere. So this is an example. Now this is from the Babylonian Talmud. So this is somewhat different, but anyway, this rabbi holds that the divine presence is found in every place. As uh, Rabbi Oshaya says, what is the meaning of of that which is written, you are the Lord, even you alone, you have made heaven. This indicates that your messengers are not like the messengers of flesh and blood. The messengers of flesh and blood return to the place from which they were sent to report on their mission, but your messengers return and report on their mission from the very place to which they're sent. As it's stated, can you send forth lightnings that they might go out and say to you, here we are. The verse does not state, they will come and say, but they may go out and say, which teaches that the divine presence is found in every place. Rabbi Yishmael too holds that the divine presence is in every place. Okay, let's go to another opinion. Um, so this rabbi holds also that the divine presence is in every place, meaning God dwells in every place. Um, and then this rabbi says the divine presence is in every place. Uh, as Rav Shishat said to his servant, set me facing any direction to pray except for the east. And the reason I do not wish to face the east is not because it does not contain the divine presence, but because the heretics instruct people to pray in that direction. Okay, so again, he believes God's everywhere. But Rabbi Abahu says, the divine presence is in the west, as Rabbi Abahu says. And then they quote what he says. So you have people believing he's everywhere, and then you have this rabbi saying, God is in the West. So this is uh, Bereshit Rabbah. It says, The Samaritan said to him, Is it possible that the one in whose regard it is written, Do I not fill the heavens and the earth? Jeremiah uh, chapter 23, That he would speak to Moses from between the two staves of the ark? He said to him, Bring me large mirrors. He said to him, Look at your reflection in them. He said that, it is his reflection that it was very large. He said to him, Bring me small mirrors. He brought him small mirrors. He said to him, Look at your reflection in them. He saw that it was small. He said to him, If you, who are flesh and blood, are able to change yourself into anything you wish, the one who spoke and made the world come into being, blessed be he, all the more so. Thus when he wishes, Do I not fill the heavens and the earth? And when he wishes, he speaks to Moses from between the two staves of the ark. So this rabbi says, At times the world and its contents cannot contain the glory of his godliness. At other times he speaks within, he speaks with a person from between the hairs of his head. That is what is written, The Lord answered Job from the tempest, from between the hairs of his head. And then we have Pasikta Rabati. Uh, it is written there, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. And here it is written, The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Rabbi Hoshua of uh, Suchnin said in the name of Rabbi Levi, To what is this likened? To an open cave at the edge of the sea. When the sea storms, the cave is filled, but the sea is not reduced. So too, even though it is written that the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, the upper and lower worlds did not lose anything of the brilliance of the glory of the Holy One, just as it is written, Do I not fill the heavens and the earth? says the Lord. Therefore it is written, and it was. Just as the divine presence was here below at the beginning of the creation of the world, but withdrew to above, now it is returned to be below as it had been. And it was that, and it was uh, it was that on the day that Moses finished. So again, he's affirming that God is everywhere, and he gives this example of a sea filling a cave to demonstrate how he believes God it, uh, fills the heavens and the earth. Another uh, midrash, an idolater asked. Rabbi uh, Rabban Gamliel, why was the Holy One, blessed be he, revealed to Moses in the burning bush? So the rabbi replies, if God had been revealed in a carob tree or a fig tree, you would, you would have asked me the same thing, and I could not send you away without an answer. This teaches you that there is no place in the world devoid of the Shekhinah, meaning the Divine Presence. <laughs> Another uh, Midrash, a royal lady once approached Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yossi. She said, My God is great than yours. I guess it's supposed to say, My God is greater than yours. He retorted, And why? 
When your God appeared to Moshe at the burning bush, Moshe had to cover his face, she explains. But when he first saw my God, the snake, he immediately ran away. Rabbi Yossi replied, May your bones disintegrate. When God revealed himself by the burning bush, he had nowhere to go. Where would he run off to? The heavens? Sea? Dry land? Does God not fill the heavens and the earth? A snake? A snake which is your God? As soon as one takes three or four steps away, he is saved. So again, he believes God is everywhere. Another uh, Midrash. And what did David see in his soul to be praising to the Holy One, blessed be he? But David said, This soul fills the body as the Holy One, blessed be he, fills his world. As it's written, Do I not fill both heaven and earth, declares the Lord? Come, the soul that fills the body and praise the Holy One, blessed be he, who fills the world. This soul supports the body as the Holy One, blessed be he, supports his world. As it's written, I was the maker and I will be the bearer and I will support you. Come, the soul that supports the body and praise the Holy One, blessed be he, who supports his world. So again, it's making it clear that they literally believe that God uh, is filling the heavens of the earth the example of how a soul fills a body and we saw that above too with the example of uh god filling the heavens and the earth with the example of a sea filling the cave okay and of course when you return to jeremiah that's not what jeremiah was talking about am i a god nearby says the lord and not a god far off who can hide who can hide in secret places so that i cannot see them says the lord do i not fill heavens and earth do I not fill heaven and earth? So, in context, Jeremiah seems to be talking about God filling the heavens and the earth in terms of his vision, in terms of his knowledge. No one can hide uh, from God because God sees everything. He sees everything in the heavens and the earth. That's what it seems Jeremiah is talking about. But anyway, Allah is not everywhere. By the way, there are, there are some rabbinic traditions or some rabbis do seem to believe that Allah is only above the throne. Um, but, of course, in the traditions I've shown, they believe he's everywhere. And Allah is not everywhere. He's above his throne. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh The most merciful is established above the throne. If you say God's everywhere, then that would mean that God's also in filth. Right? That's the... Meaning, when they say that God fills the entire heavens and the earth. So, the heavens and the earth, they, can, they, can tear, they contain impure places, like garbage, bathrooms, etc. So, to say that God is everywhere, including in these places, that would be quite inappropriate. Because now you're saying God is in filth, he's in the bathroom, and all this stuff. And Allah is far exalted above that. Allah is above the throne. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshistawah.